I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> you played an amazing game, Soda. Oh, man. So fun. I love you. I love all you guys. It's really hard. <laughs> we love you, Soda. Soda, it's so great to talk to you. That was a really heartfelt exit. I could just see the emotions on your face. What was going through your mind as your your name is coming up and you're you're saying goodbye? Yeah, um, yeah, there were a lot of feelings and I just kind of let them come because I I'm not afraid of any of them. So um, it was shock, disbelief. Uh, I'd stepped out of the matrix. Like, whoa! Now I have to process that I'm out of the matrix. Now I took the pills. Crazy. I'm sad because it's over. It really processes like, wait a minute, this is me leaving. Like you, your brain has to catch up with your actions. Crazy feeling um, when you've been in it for 14 days and starving, crazy. Um, sadness because it was over. Um, happy because I just was so happy to be there and immense gratitude for, you know, Jeff, the cast, everybody like, and in that moment, I had such like immense gratitude for just the experience. It was you, wasn't it? Yeah. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> now you credit Venus with your blind side. You say it must be you and you have this nice moment with her, but as we know, looking back, it's not exactly what it seems. Why in your mind in that moment, did it make sense that it would be her? Uh, yeah, I credited her because um, it, in my mind, we had been going at, like trying to get each other voted out of the game for uh, a while, since like day four or five. Um, and it started with day one, we were in an alliance together, um, like right at the beginning. Uh, obviously they didn't show that because they only showed our like complications from Venus's perspective. Um, so I was in an alliance with her day one and day two, um, you know, I went to other people being like, Hey, you want to work with me? They're like, no, I don't trust Venus. Um, ever since she heard that princess comment that like Tevin made, she was like, well, I'm on the bottom. I'm going to run around. I'm going to go off in the forest for minutes at a time. If Hunter does it, I can do it. Um, you know, and so it was hard staying attached to her because she kept doing things that were like making her more suspicious and not in trying to adapt and change the way that she realized people were absorbing who she was. So then I had to start distancing, distancing myself, which obviously she didn't like. Um, and a lot of our experience was like me trying to be Switzerland, like all these like little spats that happened, like were not like brought on by me. I was not being like aggressive or in her face or anything like that. But I was like, you know, you run over my foot or like you, you know, you don't talk to me or you don't da da da. And I'm like, I'm just, your feelings are valid. I, you know, I'm trying to be Switzerland and at the same time, like have boundaries, like you don't talk to me like that. But like, you know, it, it, it was very complicated. So it was like started up and it went down and like this. And, but in the end, like, you know, I thought, yo, she got me because once you don't trust me, which I knew she didn't trust me, I have to get you out because you don't trust me. And nobody trusts you, so we have to get you out. But I had thought it was her because it made sense. Had it crossed your mind at any point that it could be Tevin? Um, no. At that time, when we were separated, no. But like when we were all one big group and merged, there were things that happened that I was like, hmm, that's weird. Like I would walk into a group, he would walk out of it constantly. I would talk to him. I would, I would, I would acknowledge like he would talk around me, like to people. And I would comment on it and he would ignore it. Like there was no engagement. And that was really hurtful. I, I, I have experienced people withdrawing themselves emotionally from me. And for me to attach myself onto him and feel that I'm going to pretend you don't exist was really hard. Um, and I pulled him aside one day and I was like, what's going on? And I was like, he was like, you're going off with Venus and it doesn't make any sense, you know? But this again was happening when we were all one big group. When we were separate on the separate beaches, I just thought it was understood because he and Venus were like butting heads. Like, I'm surprised they didn't show that more. <laughs> like their butting heads a lot. Like, and so I thought that was Venus going home. I didn't really even have to scramble around. So, yeah. So you're thinking like we, me and Tevin might be a little bit more distant than before, but he's so distant from Venus that there's yeah. no comparison there. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship like with Tevin before the merge? It was good. I mean, you know, he's funny. We we get along because we have big personalities. Um, and I was just doing a lot of listening, like to everyone and just engagement. And so it was fine. You know, he definitely was like, 
at some, at sometimes like, oh, I'm working on the shelter and no one's here. And I'm like, well, I'm doing the fire, but like, if you need me, like I, I will help you, you know, stuff like that. So the communication was there in the early stages, at least, you know, we seen his confessionals that he like really saw you as like a social threat in the game, someone who was making everybody comfortable. And like, you know, he's a social threat too. Did you see that in him? And, oh, like, and in your mind, how deep were you going with him in the game at that point? Um, I would have been very loyal to him until the point where I didn't need to, because like you said, there's two social butterflies and like, I am the type of butterfly that's like, there's room for all of us. And he was like, oh, that's really threatening. I need to take that out. My plan would have been to like hide behind him because I think he's a lot like, ah, like almost bigger than me in a lot of ways. And he was talking to everyone too. And it's like, well, I, one of us has to hide behind the other, you know what I mean? So, um, but I definitely wouldn't have voted against him, like because he was in my mind loyal. So it's alarming to me that you like went straight for me and the attitude that you did. Though I'll be straight up with you. I needed a moment because I know that's fine snap. that you need a moment, but you did snap at the same time. Like it's fine that I you didn't. Yeah, I didn't want to raise my voice. I, I know, but mad. you still were like you voted for me. At the beginning of this episode, you have this uh, argument with Venus where she thinks that you're the one that wrote her name down when it was actually Charlie. What was that moment like for you? And when it does get resolved, and Charlie says, "Hey, it was me." Did that bring you guys any resolution? Like what conversation did you have after that? I mean, it was hard because she was just like, you did it, you did it. And I was like, here's another thing I'm being blamed for again. Like <laughs> I first I ran over your toe and now I'm not talking to you. And then here now is the vote. And it's just like, everything's my fault. It's really obnoxious, especially when I had, when I really didn't do it. Um, fair for her to think that, but the, again, the approach is just like, ugh, you know what I mean? And I'm at this point, I'm like fed up. I'm like, I don't know. You're going to have to do something about it. You're going to have to figure that out because it wasn't me and done and seen. And then what's funny is that you see us walking off together first and then Charlie admits that he did it, but it was reversed. Charlie admitted it first and then we walked off. And I was like, you still came at me like, and she's like, I know. Da, 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 da. And I was like, literally, there's no explanation for that. Like, can you apologize? Can you recognize how you're talking to somebody? You know, and it just it wasn't that like there's never been a resolution, period. Moving forward to the challenge, when you see how the rock draw pans out, what is your first impression? Are you like, I've got this in the bag, like I have I'm safe, or this might be tough? Well, it's the same exact rock draw uh, as the last challenge. The only difference is Tevin's on our team now. So I feel a little bit better because we got a little bit of strength and that challenge strength doesn't matter as much as like um, balance and agility. So I being with like a lot of people who have like a smaller frame, you know, are better because they can, the shift in weight is less significant. Like somebody like me, who's really top heavy trying to, that's it. As soon as you try to step one side, that's it. You're going over. But if you are a little slimmer and like you can, you have like really quick agility, you can kind of manage your balance a little bit better because you're not tipping either way so dramatically. So I felt like, oh, okay, we got some, we got some well fit people for this challenge. So maybe we'll actually pull it out. So let's say alternate universe, you draw Tim's colored rock, he draws yours. So now you're on the other tribe with Hunter, the Yanu three. And Ben, do you think you stay? What, what was your relationship like with Hunter? Where, how do you feel like that might've panned out? I think, I think there's a world in which I stay. I do think that Hunter probably, you know, could have felt closer to the Yanu three um, because he was like a really aggressive player in his own way. Um, I think me, Ben and Tim could have done something too. Who knows? Like I'm, I'm thinking of personalities. Like I'm a very personality person and Hunter though, we got along and he's very sweet. And like, we, we, you know, we kikied, we, we like sang songs together. He did not hate my songs contrary to popular belief. Um, he's more introverted, right? It's not as easy to get information from him. Ben is Ben. Tim, we were like really trying to work together. So we, that would have been a thing. Of course, I would have consulted with Hunter first to see if I could have tried to read where he was naturally going and observe him. Um, but yeah, I think there there could have been a chance to where I stayed and Ayanu left maybe. There were two idols found on Nami Beach, one by Randon and then one by Hunter after Randon was evacuated. Did you catch wind of any of those? 
Um, I thought I sussed out Randon because he was holding his pants one time, like walking past me very quickly. And I was like, huh, maybe you found something. And it was confirmed later, way after he was medevac, like a couple days, Hunter told me that he had found it and that he found out because Venus, I think, told Hunter about it. That's what Hunter told me. Um, if not, one of them will fact check me. But I think that's what happened. But I found out anyway that that is actually what happened. As you're looking back, are there any moves that you would have made differently that you feel like might have had the biggest impact in staying? Honestly, not one that I could have made, but um, overall, I think like losing some challenges and going to tribal earlier on would have been helpful because you can't necessarily play the full game without playing the full game and the full game involves tribal. How do you think that those tribals would have shook out if you guys had gone earlier before the merge? Early enough? Venus would have gone, possibly me next. Um, maybe a th four or five or six days in, I could have very well been the first vote. But I do think I could have exploited like people's general um, relationships to my advantage. Um, later, had we gone to like the last tribal before um, this one, I mean, again, my, I feel like I could, it could have gone either way, but I, at least we would have got the chance to show loyalty, at least like that is so important. Now, while you did not win the game, you are the mayor of Ponderosa. You have a big role as the first jury member, uh, as you were walking away, how are you feeling about that? Uh, being able to have that impact on the game and knowing that you were very close to, uh, leaving earlier and not being able to be part of the jury. Girl, I ain't feeling nothing when I'm leaving. Girl, please. That ain't coming till the next day. Give me my pasta. Give me my wine. Don't talk to me. Let me cry. I ain't think about that. Next day, I'm like, oh, yes, I have a big, big job here. I can't wait. I'm going to sing everybody a song when they come in and, you know, celebrate everybody for being here. But when I'm walking away on that bridge, girl, <laughs> I can't think of nothing else but... <laughs> How how was that first meal? It must have been the best thing you ever ate. Well, it was good, but I mean, and this is this is a first world comment. It might sound ungrateful, but like I had just eaten. I literally had just eaten. So it's it's not the same as when you're really starving. Like really, I mean, I was starving. Um, I lost a lot of weight, but um, yeah, I had just eaten. So I was like, oh, food. Yeah, but it was spaghetti, and I was I was so happy. Seventh person voted out of Survivor 46. Tim, need to bring me a torch? Tim, it's so great to talk to you, but under these circumstances, it's so tough to go out right before jury. That must have been really hard. As your torch is getting snuffed, what emotions and thoughts are going through your head? Rage. I'm upset. I'm pissed. I didn't want to go home at that time. Uh, I'm sad. I'm sad. It's a blind side, so... For it to not be expected, you know, definitely caught me off guard. But it was a huge, humbling experience. I think that being that close to the jury made me feel thankful. Because if I had to sit and watch that or the people that got me out and watch them play, I would have been a little more frustrated. But um I think I went home when it was time to go home. Plus, I needed to have a bowel movement thanks to the Tiki Man. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's one good thing. Um, you had yeah. wanted Hunter to go. You and Ben put Hunter's name down. Everyone else puts your name down. We saw you pitch the idea of turning on the Plus One Alliance and voting Hunter to Q, and he didn't seem too receptive. Were you worried in the moment about how he was going to receive it and if it was going to work? I wasn't that worried. I think that in the episode prior, we did the same thing about the Mo vote. And it's not something that's really shown, but we butted heads about the last two votes. And it wasn't about an alliance to me. It was about the biggest threat. That's what made the most sense to me. It was logic. Um, going against this plus one alliance, it didn't bother me. It didn't. I, I thought that counting out six people in a group of 13 never works in Survivor. So it, it wasn't something that I had completely committed to. So 
I just thought that Hunter made the most sense. And I didn't think that I was a bigger threat than someone that had beaten us in almost, well, in every challenge. Tim right now is trying to position himself in this game to get to the end in multiple ways. He wants to have the plus one alliance, but he also wants to have his seagull alliance. He also want to have his sub alliance with Ben. Which is it, Tim? Which game are you playing? You were navigating a lot of different loyalties in the game. You found yourself like in the middle of both Sega, but also this new alliance that you found on the journey. Where would you say that your true loyalties lied, if anywhere? Or were you genuinely keeping your options open and just seeing how things went? The more and more I watched the show, I realized nobody was really rocking with Tim. I didn't feel like I had an alliance when I sit there and watch it. Um, my number one was always Ben. And that's just a name I wasn't willing to give up for competitors that I had been playing against, almost strangers. I've never talked to these guys in this setting. So it didn't make sense to give up uh, my number one. But when I look back and I watch it, I think um, the only alliance was the Sega boys. I thought that we were playing together and we were kind of on the, both, the same sides when it came to voting whomever out. Now, when you're approached on the journey about this alliance, you pull in yeah. Maria as your plus one. So yeah, yeah. was she your number one at that time? And what was that decision there if Ben was your closest loyalty? My decision there was to not give up my number one. Pentavius pitched the plus one alliance, but his question was, who do you trust the most? After my journey, we had to go to tribal council. And Ben it was an option. They wanted Ben gone. So I didn't know if I say Ben, and Ben might not be there by the time we get to Survivor Limbo. I threw out Maria's name because it was safe. And to hear that I was her number three was interesting, but I also thought that was a lot because we have been voting on the same side the entire time. But either way, looks like she liked the plus one alliance after she found out from Quintavious or myself. Um, but the truth is that no, Ben was my number one. I just wasn't willing to give him up at that journey. That's so interesting. And that, that puts you in the toughest spot because you're on this uh, six person like split tribe with yeah. all of these people from the plus one alliance. And Ben is the only one who isn't immune, who's who's out there. And he, he wasn't part of the group, but he was yeah. your true number one. Do you think yeah. if you had said, Ben is the person I trust the most, Ben is my number one, that Q would have been more receptive to taking out Hunter? Or do you think it always would have been him wanting to take out Ben at that point? I think either way, they wanted a Sega gone. You know, I think I soon realized that they wanted Sega out. Seeing how much hate and dislike for Sega because we were a close group, they wanted us to be disbanded. They wanted to see the cracks in our tribe and they they finally did but either way um i didn't think anybody's name matters because when you count out six people in a group of 13 in the game of survivor i don't i've never seen a season where it's worked can i give tim a hug real quick Brotherly love. your relationship with ben was really beautiful to see i love that hug at the end as you're saying goodbye um, how soon in the game did you know, like, this is my guy? And uh, what was that alliance like? Ben and I, I knew Ben and I were rocking maybe like day two. Uh, because Ben and Charlie did the Savvy Challenge. And when they got back from the Savvy Challenge, I told them that the girls were playing the game because they were whispering. They were making decisions and some thoughts and just really being close knit to themselves. And so... Day two, Ben and I talked about what we both did for students and how we coach students. And so we had a lot of parallels there. We were the same age and uh, we were cracking jokes. I think a lot of people thought we were talking strategy. We were we were bonding. We were having a good time out there. So um, early on, I knew Ben and I, you know, we were we were tied in for the long haul. And you say the Sega boys were close. Charlie was in an interesting position because he is part of, as you've seen now, this Charlie's Angels Alliance. Did yeah. you see him as someone who was like working both sides? Did you feel like he was with you more or with the girls? I think, I think Charlie's smart. You know, at the time he didn't tell us Harvard, but he did say he was a law student. I think a lot of his responses are diplomatic. 
And you can't really say no to any alliance when you're playing the game of Survivor. But we also knew about Charlie's Angels. Charlie told us. Uh, and I, and um, so I didn't think anything of it. You know, I trusted what he was saying to us versus what he was giving the Charlie's Angels. I thought it was cool. No, no, going back to last week where you you feel like you're kind of cornered and you have to give up Mo's name and that they want a Sega out. Looking back, how do you reflect on that decision? And do you feel like that was like your only path at that point, that they just really needed to seek out and you had to say a name? I was trying to say, look, you're not going to bully me just to give us a name. Like, we're playing Survivor, so why would I tell you who to vote for? And that was kind of the pitch they were given. And also, everybody didn't have to give a name. It was Nami and Sega that gave a name. Yanu didn't have it to give a name. They were safe. And so I just... I was hesitant because I wanted them to do the work. Why would I have to give you a name or tell you who to vote for? Let Jeff say all the names when we vote, you know, but I didn't think it was something that we had to do. Plus, Sega was five strong, and we just needed one more Nami out uh, in that in that picture. If you're dropped right back into that merge feast, like, do you say most name or do you not? Yeah, yeah, you say it. Because either way, we were targets. Either way, they hated Sega. Uh, I, pro- I probably would have said it quicker. I probably would have said it quicker because they were mad at how hesitant we were. Um, but I said it. Yeah, I, I probably still would have said it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Knowing what I know now, I probably would have said Maria's name. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Now, okay, so if this episode was a normal 12-person tribal council, do you feel like you would be the one going home, or do you feel like I would have played out differently? It would have played out differently. It would have played out way differently. For the first time in Survivor history, five African Americans make the merge. Never been done in Survivor. It's a record, actually. I think it was four, but this time it was five. I think it would have been done differently because uh, I would have been able to campaign my vote to everyone. You know, tribe would have got even way spicier if people were trying to throw blind sides. I, I kind of imagine if we did a a, a a big tribal where we would have had to get up and like people are like scrambling around and Jeff's like instigating. And then Tim goes to the corner and people are talking about the vote of the challenge. So that would have been my preference opposed to these this split vote idea. I love y'all. Love you Time for to go after you left the island and you're thinking about all of this what was the biggest thought in your head where you're like I wish I did this I should have done that like the move that you wish that you had made and then also what's the move where you're like I'm so glad I did that I would never take that back um standing on like what I believe in and like you know not allowing anyone to tell me what to do or or push me around was something that I'm not going to take back I think that when you compete, you have to have these tough conversations and you're not, you're not going to agree with everyone. So, and I did it and I was fine with that. The one move I would have made would have been in this final tribal, I would have persuaded the Yanu girls to play with the Sega boys and we should have voted out Q. And then the Yanu girls would have been the swing vote between Nami and Sega and they would control the game going forward. And I think that would have been like, that would have that would have been my pitch. You got to work with all three Yanus in that last day. Did you, while you were in there, see any of those cracks? Obviously, we saw in the episode the girls talking about Q a little bit. Yeah. Or did they seem like a united front? They seemed united. They did it. They played it really well. If I knew about a crack, I would have said, "Then it's time for y'all to get them out." Uh, Quinn, yeah, it's time for y'all to vote Quintavious out and play your own game. You know, I thought that would have been a um a smart play had I known some of that information, but you don't, you know, unless you ask really, but I just, it was, that was a, it was, a, it, it wasn't as chaotic, but I felt that everybody was thinking logical or that's what I thought. Everybody was thinking logical. Let's get the biggest threat out, not Sega again. Shout out Tevin Mama from Virginia. Artenza. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Charlie's daddy, Brian. Shout out Maria's family. Sebastian, Leo, Juju. This what black people Shout do on the radio, Jill. Yes. Spicer family. What Shout out to Uncle Poo Poo and my nephew, John. Your daddy said if you ain't in the fight, shut up. <laughs>
<laughs> you had a lot of fun moments in the game. Are there any that we didn't get to see that you wish we did? Uh, well, one in that shot out thing, I shot it out the entire everybody playing. So I did shout out my family, but I knew something about everybody in the game at that point that I could shot them out. So I thought that was, I wish they would have sh shown how much I knew about everybody at the Nui Nui trial, not just the three people I named. Um, I also made fire on day three in the nighttime. I thought that was impressive. I think I wanted that to be shown. And we ate papaya. We found some ripe papaya at the Sega Beach. I shook this tree and like papaya start falling. And that was uh, one of the best things I had out there. So I wish that was something that could have been shown too.